Saturday, September 1st, 2018. I'm Justin Costelli, and this is your weekly mixtape and weekend review for All About Your Benjamins. Uh, I had planned to actually skip this week because the holiday weekend, do some family stuff, but of course there was a lot of news that I felt was important to cover regarding planning and investments. So I shifted the video later into the evening. You hear the background noise of the kids playing. Usually that's why I do this early in the morning. But hey, uh, I still want to bring this video to you and cover these few topics. Uh, but real quick first, I want to acknowledge, I know I always link to a lot of Wall Street Journal articles and I know those are behind a payroll, uh, payroll paywall. Um, hopefully my summaries in these videos take the place of you actually reading those. Uh, but in, to save time throughout the week, it's easier for me to just use those Wall Street Journal articles. Um, if I can, I'll find ones that are not behind a paywall. Uh, but just to, to save time and get this done quickly, I'm gonna keep on using those Wall Street Journal uh, articles. So I apologize if you can't read the whole thing. I think you may be able to access a few uh, every month, so maybe pick and choose. Uh, but I will do my best to try to find other sources, but that's my go-to for the important things regarding planning and investments. Uh, so that's where I'm gonna be getting those from and they'll still be there, so I apologize for that. All right, now let's really get to the news. So the first one I wanted to cover uh, is NAFTA. As you heard Roman talk about, uh, he mentioned in the preview, talking about NAFTA. Uh, so President Trump met with Mexico and Canada this week and he's batting 500 as far as getting a new NAFTA agreement. Uh, early in the week, he and Mexico came to an agreement on new terms, uh, but however, Friday came and went without an agreement with Canada. There was supposed to be a hard deadline that that needed to be done by Friday, uh, but they're going to extend it into next week. So we'll talk more about the terms as they become finalized and out there, but just know that NAFTA is in the works of finally being renegotiated. We'll see if it all the way goes through. But so far, Mexico's on board with what's been painted out there. We've got to wait and see what's with Canada. There's a little bit more concern about if that'll happen. Once it's done, the details will be out. We'll cover that, what that means for us. Uh, but just know that NAFTA is in the works right now. Stock market had a great week, so our second topic, Leo mentioned small cap stocks. Uh, we will get to that in a moment, but the, uh, the markets did well this week again. Don't wanna focus on a week to week, but we are hitting all time highs or at near all time highs. And I did wanna highlight small cap stocks because they're leading the way this year, this year in the US. Um, so first, don't go chasing, not waterfalls, don't go chasing performance and go, start overloading into small caps. That should have been an allocation in your portfolio already, so you should be participating in the good small cap performance. Uh, another reminder for diversification, having that in the portfolio. Um, and as a dimensional fund advisor, uh, not advisor, but dimensional fund advisors, fund user, uh, we've been waiting for small caps to do well. If you're unfamiliar with the fund family, they use some academic research that supports small cap stocks doing better over the long term, even though they may be more volatile and have more risk associated with them. So funds that are with dimensional funds typically have more small cap, which is what I use a decent amount at my firm. So we've been waiting for this small cap to come in play. It's finally here, so we are happy. Uh, now if we just get value stocks to follow along, life would be great. Uh, just kidding, you know, no complaints right now with what the market's doing this year. We'd love to see this keep going. Um, just you know, remember that we are at all-time highs, and all-time highs lead to new all-time highs, but they could also lead to a correction. Uh, we don't know what's gonna happen, and if anybody's telling you they do, they're full of it. Um, so stick to your plan, stick to being diversified, have good behaviors, good practices, and keep doing what you're doing moving forward and focusing on the things that you can control. Um, next up, Leo mentioned about private investors. Uh, so you may not have known what this was off the preview, but the SEC chairman wants to change uh, the rules for investing in private deals and bring it more mainstream to the average investor. Uh, so if you don't know if right now to invest in certain investments, you have to be what's called an accredited investor and have certain income requirements or a net worth to invest in more, you know, they would say complicated investments. Uh, and private investing would be one of those things. Uh, so companies like Uber and Airbnb have remained private. Private investors have invested in those and have done very well. And us normal investors have been left out. Um, We've seen instances where a lot of the growth happens in the private stages, a company goes public, and then the price falls out and it's the average everyday investor, it's Main Street that experiences all the losses while everybody on the private stage made a lot of money. Uh, so the, the SEC chairman would like to try to level the playing field a little bit more. Uh, you know, I have mixed feelings. I like more access, I like leveling the playing field. Um, however, I'm not sure if this level of complexity is really ne necessary for everyday investors and for our planning. So I don't know if it is necessary, although it would be pretty cool to be able to access those types of investments, but they would have different stipulations. It wouldn't be like buying a stock or bond on the market or, uh, or mutual fund. 
So I, you know, I think the main issue for the public is not investment options. I think, but the amount of money saved. So it's not as if the SEC could do anything to help people save more money. But I don't think offering private investments uh, to the average investor is going to solve anything. I think, if anything, it may create a little bit more um, headache. And Colin Roach had a great tweet. I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, my FinTwit friends out there, if you can help me get hooked up with him to have a chat, I would love it. He's great. Uh, but he said about this this rule or this uh, this SEC's ask is that this seems like a dangerous idea to me. I always like to credit investor in rule because it made sure the only people who got ripped off by hedge funds are people who can afford to get ripped off by hedge funds. So I thought it was kind of funny what he was saying. But going back to the point of does that average everyday investor need to have access to private companies or are they better off just having a diversified portfolio, saving and controlling their expenses? I think that that's the way to do it, not investing in private companies. But we'll see if this, this gets passed or not gets passed, if this rule actually has gets some traction and becomes a reality. Um, Roman mentioned retirement plan changes. Not any major changes yet, but President Trump signed an executive order uh, to have RMDs and small 401k plans for small businesses reviewed. So um, the push is to try to prepare workers better for retirement, which is a great cause. However, I don't know if either of these really solve the problem. Um, but as far as the RMDs go, the measure would potentially move the RMD. So if you don't know what that is, an RMD stands for required minimum distribution. And at age 70 and a half, it's a certain amount of money you have to take from your pre-tax retirement accounts. And if you don't, take that amount you have to you have to meet that level so for instance if you take ten thousand dollars a year but your required distribution is 15 you have to take the extra five to get the 15 so that's your required amount that sets in at 70 and a half and this would push that out later into life which i think makes a little bit of sense given that we're living longer that would give people more time to not have to access those funds if they don't need them have it compound more um, but my thought is i don't know if that really impacts the people with a lot of wealth and maybe they don't need to access those funds and if you're an average everyday person maybe you're already taking more than your rmd by 70 and a half so i don't know if it solves a lot of problems but i like where the vision is going um, as far as the, the retirement plans for small businesses it, the goal is to try to make 401k plans more accessible to small businesses uh, so if you don't know 401k plans can tend to be expensive they're um, a pain to administer from the business standpoint and there's a lot of rules that go with them um, this measure would try to allow small businesses kind of to group together to get a 401k to drive costs down again i think it's another good measure giving more tools to people to prepare for retirement um, however i don't know if it forces people to actually use those vehicles so again i'm all for the vision i appreciate the focus on trying to improve the retirement picture uh, a lot of that though is going to fall on our own shoulders and having better behaviors and saving more but these measures and the identification that this is a need is a good thing and a move in the right direction. Um, and finally, Roman uh, shared with you that we were going to talk about Merrill Lynch. Um, so Merrill Lynch announced that they're going to go back to allowing commissions in retirement accounts. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk on, on here and other places about the fiduciary ruling and commissions versus fee only and conflicts that come up with that. Uh, back when the fiduciary rule from the Department of Labor was going looked like it was going to be passed. Uh, Merrill Lynch had a campaign, a full page ad they took out saying how they were going to be doing what's best for the client and changing their business model because they wanted to and not because they had to. I forget the exact language, but that was the message is we're going to do what's best for you, the client. And fast forward to today where the ruling probably isn't going to go through or it will be a while before they goes. They bring back the commissions in retirement accounts. I'm not going to go into a, a, a tangent about fee only and commissions and all that conversation because uh, I've done that before, I've written about it before, you can find that later, that's not the point of today's talk, but just that Merrill Lynch is bringing commissions back. They say they don't think very many of the fee ca fee accounts are gonna go back to commission accounts, but that'll be, wait. we'll wait and see. Um, you know, I'm biased, but I don't know why advisors stay in that business model and stay with the wirehouses. Um, with technology, you can go out and start your own firm or go to an independent broker dealer. I don't see why uh, you would subject yourself to these headlines and bad press uh, with, from your employer that you have no control over. And I don't know how much longer uh, clients are going to stick with it. You know, I've seen and talked to people considering moving uh, from the wirehouses to the independent side, whether it be an RIA or an independent advisor affiliated with an independent broker dealer, just because they don't like the press that's out there. Um, so uh, just another interesting 
situation that goes on with the uh, the wirehouse side of the world but Merrill Lynch is going back to allowing commissions in there if you were on Twitter over the week you saw a much more harsh take on this uh, I'm just here to tell you the facts maybe a little bit of my views and then go forward uh, so that's everything that I wanted to do uh, for this week as you could see there was a lot this week that actually was pertaining to our retirement between uh, maybe the changes with the RMD small businesses having 401ks maybe as a private or maybe as a, an investor you have access to private funds in the future a lot of things that were this week really pertain to financial planning um, and then you have NAFTA and small caps in the market doing well so I thought it was important that I cover this even on a holiday weekend which I hope you're having a great holiday weekend uh, I'm gonna head on in because this is video has been going on I've noticed it's been getting darker so have a great holiday weekend be sure to check all of the mixtape articles down below if you're watching this on YouTube head on over to allaboutyourbenjamins.com and catch those it was another good week of writing um, and while you're over on the blog or over on YouTube be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything um, so thanks again for watching we'll see you next week have a great Labor Day and I will see you in the next video